This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. And we are coming on the air right now because the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, is about to hold a press conference in Washington, D.C. Earlier this morning, he shocked uh, Washington, much of the world, by announcing he was resigning as Speaker. Just yesterday, you saw him there with Pope Francis, welcoming the Pope to the Capitol, something he had worked hard for for many years. And then this morning, going to his conference, his Republican colleagues, and saying it was time for him to go. He would resign as Speaker and from his seat in the House on October 30th. I want to go right to our Washington correspondent, John Carl, for more on this. And, and John Carl, the uh, Speaker actually said he was inspired by Pope Francis, but well, hold on now because well, the Speaker is coming to the podium. <laughs> I used to sing that on my way to work in the morning. Listen, now, my mission uh, every day is to fight for a smaller, less costly, and more accountable government. And over the last uh, five years, our majority has advanced uh, conservative reforms uh, that will help our children and their children. We're now on track to cut government spending by $2.1 trillion over the next 10 years. We've made the first real entitlement reform in nearly two decades. And we've protected 99% of the American people from an increase in our taxes. And we've done all this with a Democrat in the White House. So I'm proud of uh, what we've accomplished. But more than anything, my first job as Speaker is to protect uh, the institution. A lot of you know that, uh, now know, uh, that uh, my plan was to step down at the end of last year. I decided uh, uh, in November of uh, 2010 that uh, when I was elected speaker, that uh, serving two terms would uh, have been plenty. And, uh, but in June of last year, when it became clear that the majority leader lost his election, uh, I frankly didn't believe it was right uh, for me to leave at the end of last year. Uh, so my goal was to leave at the end of this year. So I planned, uh, actually on my birthday, November 17th, uh, to announce that I was leaving at the end of the year. Uh, but uh, it's become clear to me that uh, this prolonged leadership turmoil uh, would do uh, irreparable harm to the institution. Uh, so this morning, I informed my colleagues that uh, I would resign from the speakership and resign from Congress at the end of October. Now, as you've often uh, heard me say, uh, this isn't about me. It's about the people. It's about the institution. Uh, just yesterday, we witnessed uh, the awesome sight of uh, Pope Francis addressing uh, the greatest legislative body in the world. And I hope that uh, we will all uh, heed his call to live by the golden rule. Uh, but last night, last night, I started to think about this. And uh, this morning, I woke up and I said my prayers, as I always do. And I decided, you know, today's the day I'm going to do this. As simple as that. Uh, that's the code I've always lived by. If you do the right things for the right reasons, the right things will happen. And I know uh, good things lie ahead uh, for this house uh, in this country, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished, especially proud of my team. You know, uh, I've been here uh, my 25th year here, and I've succeeded in large part because uh, I've put a staff together and a team together, uh, many of which have been with me for a long time. And, uh, and without uh, a great staff, uh, you can't be a great member, and you certainly can't be a great speaker. I'm going to thank uh, my family for putting up with us uh, all these years. My poor girls, who are now 37 and 35, uh, their first uh, campaign photo uh, was in uh, July of 1981. And so uh, they've, uh, they've had to endure all this. It's one thing for me to have to endure it. I've got thick skin. Uh, but, uh, you know, the girls and my wife, uh, they've had to put up with a lot over the years. Uh, let me express uh, my gratitude uh, to my uh, constituents uh, who've uh, sent me here uh, 13 times uh, over the last uh, 25 years. Uh, you can't get here without, uh, without getting votes. Uh, but, uh, uh, and I, I said this often, people ask me, what's the, what's the, greatest thing uh, about being speaker or about being an elected official. And I said, well, it's the people you get to meet. You know, I've met tens of thousands of people in my own congressional district that I would never have met other than the fact that I decided to run for Congress. And uh, over the years, as I've traveled on behalf of uh, my colleagues in the party, uh, I've met tens of thousands of additional people all over the country. 
And uh, you meet rich people, you meet poor people, you meet interesting people, eh, probably a few boring ones along the way. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that 99.9% .9 of the people I meet uh, on the road, anywhere, uh, could, not be, uh, could not be nicer uh, than, uh, than they've been. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been, really, it's been wonderful. Uh, it's been an honor to serve in this institution. And with that, all right, Junior, go ahead. Mr. Boehner, you were noticeably overcome with emotion yesterday. Really? <laughs> well, what a surprise. I'm curious, is if you, you reached this decision last night, if the grace of Pope Francis led you to this decision? Uh, no, no. Yesterday was a wonderful day. It really was. And uh, was I emotional yesterday? I think I was. Uh, I was really emotional in a moment that uh, really no one saw. Uh, as uh, the Pope and I were getting ready to exit the building, we found ourselves uh, alone. And uh, the Pope uh, grabbed my left arm and, and uh, said some very kind words to me about uh, my commitment <coughs> to kids and education. And the Pope puts his arm around me and kind of pulls me to him and says, please pray for me. Well, who am I to pray for the Pope? But I did. Uh, it's, uh, it, listen, it was never about the vote, all right? There was never any doubt about whether I could survive a vote. I don't want my members to have to go through this. I certainly don't want the institution to go through this. And so, especially when, you know, I knew I was, I was thinking about walking out the door anyway. So it's the right time to do it. And frankly, I am entirely comfortable doing it before that a leader who doesn't have anybody following him is just a guy taking a walk. That's right. I got plenty of people, I got plenty of people following me, uh, but uh, this turmoil that's been uh, churning now for a couple of months uh, is not good for the members and it's not good for the institution. And uh, uh, if I wasn't planning on leaving here soon, uh, I can tell you I would not have done this. If I, if I may just yeah. continue, there are people who are on the right in your caucus and even outside of this institution who have been wanting you to step down for some time who feel that they have a victory today. Do well, you feel that you, that you were pushed out? No. Uh, the members, uh, uh, I'm glad I made this announcement at the conference with all of my Republican colleagues uh, because uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a very good moment uh, to help kind of rebuild the team. Uh, listen, uh, I feel good about what I've done. Uh, I know that I, every day, uh, I've tried to do the right things for the right reasons and try to do the right thing for the country. <sighs> How can this not be a moment of turmoil? You said you thought about fleeing two years ago after a panel, but it was the time you said this would have pushed the house in the turmoil. You have to keep the government open in a couple of days, debt ceiling, there's going to be... One I'm going to be here for another... A barn burner of leadership. I'm going to be here for another five weeks, and uh, I'm not... I'm not going to leave. Uh, I'm not going to sit around here and do nothing for the next 30 days. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and I uh, plan on getting as much of it done as I can uh, before I exit. And as a result, though, because, does that make it easier in some ways to make some tougher decisions, maybe relying on Democrats to keep the government open next week? No. I'm going to make the same decisions I would have made regardless of this. And there you have it right there. The Speaker of the House, John Boehner, announcing that he is going to resign, resign as Speaker on October 30th and resign his seat in the House. Said he was doing it to protect the institution of the House and getting emotional as he talked about a private moment yesterday with Pope Francis where the Pope asked him to pray for the Pope. I want to go to John Carl, our Washington correspondent, John Carl. And you saw uh, the Speaker there talking about the timing, saying he always wanted to leave at the end of this year, was planning on doing it later but was going to do moving it up a few weeks and clearly a couple votes in mind coming up one he was going to face a vote for his challenge challenging him as speaker and secondly uh, doing his best to avoid another government shutdown which could have come as early as next week yeah Boehner was going to face a, a real battle for his own leadership he went out on his own here george but there is no doubt it would have been a tough fight just to hang on to that speakership and funding for the government runs out on october 1st and you have a group of Republicans, the same, who wanted to oppose him for speaker, wanted to oppose him 
on the far right who wanted to uh, say that they were willing to shut the government down if Planned Parenthood wasn't defunded. Uh, Boehner thought that was a terrible fight to have. He didn't want to see another government shutdown. Uh, they were threatening his speakership if he didn't push that hard. Now uh, he's leaving, but he's not going to leave until after uh, there will be that vote. And now Boehner doesn't have to worry about a rebellion uh, of, of people, you know, Republicans threatening to, to push him out. You know, one other important point, George, is that Boehner was is an extremely popular leader within that Republican conference. But you have a group of about, it, it fluctuates, 30 to 40 uh, Republicans who have absolutely no loyalty to him whatsoever and who want to push and are the kind of no compromise a crowd. Uh, and th those were the ones that, uh, that ultimately forced and, this decision. And that point, John, the President Obama, President Obama in the last hour addressed that point in his press conference with the Chinese leader after calling John Boehner a good man and a patriot. He had this to say. My hope is there's a recognition on the part of the next speaker, uh, something I think John understood, even though at times it was challenging to bring his caucus along, that we can have significant differences on issues, but that doesn't mean you shut down the government. That doesn't mean you uh, risk the full faith and credit of the United States. Uh, you don't uh, invite uh, potential financial crises. Uh, you build roads and pass transportation bills, and you do the basic work of governance uh, that ensures that our military is operating and that our national parks are open and that our kids are learning. Uh, and, th and there's no weakness in that. There's, uh, that's what government is uh, in our democracy. You don't get what you want 100% of the time. Cokie Roberts, that's the president's hope, but whoever becomes the next speaker is going to face an incredible challenge. Absolutely, because this, gives, this will give strength to the people who are, uh, think that it compromises a bad thing. That combined with the Republican presidential candidates who are out talking about uh, fighting the government, fighting the president, 72% uh, of Republican primary voters in a recent poll say that they're against the Republican leadership of Congress. And now those people have a lot more power. And Matthew, this was playing out today on the campaign trail. Exactly. Ted Cruz has already lambasted him in the moment that you would look for graciousness. I just think the moment we have is a convergence of a pope with many historic moments, and now we have this momentous moment, and they're going to be forever linked, as the speaker said. This decision is linked to the pope's visit here. Capstone of his career, something he'd fought for for a long time, that visit of Pope Francis. Thank you both very much. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be back tonight with World News with David Muir and the Pope's travels through Central Park. 80,000 people expected later this afternoon. This has been a special report from ABC News.